If you're a boater, an angler, or really anyone who deals with Michigan's lakes, you've probably encountered weeds. But did you know that some weeds are more troublesome than others? By joining the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch, you can learn how to identify these invasive species and learn how to deal with them. As part of Michigan's Volunteer Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch will empower you with a monitoring strategy for your lake so you can detect early infestations of these damaging species. If detected early, weed management strategies can stop these aquatic invaders before they cause significant impacts to the lake ecosystem or recreation. In this short video, we'll take you through the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch. Stay tuned to learn how to collect plants from your lake, where to sample, how to identify those plants, and how to report the results. Let's start by taking a look at the plants that are the focus of the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch. While there are a lot of aquatic invasive plants in Michigan's lakes, there are four that are particularly problematic, and those include Eurasian water milfoil, curly leaf pondweed, starry stonewort, and hydrilla. Let's learn how to identify each of those now. Eurasian water milfoil is already found in hundreds of Michigan's inland lakes. It forms a dense mat of vegetation at the water surface, making it difficult to fish and play in the lake. It reproduces very effectively by vegetative fragments and easily spreads to other parts of the lake and to other lakes by hitchhiking on boats and trailers. Be careful when identifying Eurasian milfoil as there are several valuable species of native milfoils in Michigan that we want to preserve. The easiest way to tell milfoil from other plants is to look at the leaf. There are usually four leaves at each node of the plant. Looking at one leaf, it resembles a feather or a child's drawing of a Christmas tree. No other plant has a leaf of this shape. Once we have determined that it is milfoil, count the number of leaflets on one side of the leaf. Eurasian water milfoil will have more than 12 leaflets and native milfoils will have 12 or less. The native and the Eurasian milfoil can and do hybridize, displaying physical features of both species and causing increased problems during treatment efforts. The only way to identify a hybrid milfoil is genetic testing. CLMP staff can help you identify this option when monitoring your lake in this program. The next weed to look for is curly leaf pondweed, an invasive plant introduced intentionally to Michigan lakes in the 1800s to provide fish habitat. It is not a nuisance in every lake where it appears, but it can be problematic, especially in disturbed areas. Curly leaf grows earlier in the season than most of our other aquatic plants, appears reddish brown in the water, and has wavy, stiff, and crinkled or curly looking leaves. Curly leaf pondweed is the only variety that has leaf edges with little teeth or serrated edges. These serrated edges make the leaf look wavy, like lasagna noodles. There are some native pondweeds that look similar when they are underwater, but a closer inspection of the leaf edges will determine if the plant you have is native or invasive. Third on the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch list is Starry Stonewort, an aggressive, newly discovered invader to Michigan lakes. This weed can spread very quickly and blanket the lake bottom with a dense mat, sometimes growing up to eight feet tall. It can tolerate colder, darker water than other aquatic plants. Starry stonewort is actually a macro algae and has a jointed, uneven appearance. It can be different shades of green, but when the stems are squeezed between the fingers, it gives off a popping or bubble wrap feel and sound. The most effective way to identify starry stonewort is to look for white or tan star-shaped bulbils. These star structures are the reproductive features of starry stonewort and are sometimes the only way to identify it from native lookalikes. A similar species to starry stonewort is native cara or muskgrass. Both muskgrass and starry stonewort like to live along the bottom sediment of lakes. Muskgrass provides beneficial habitat to fish and insects, but starry stonewort does not. Like starry stonewort, muskgrass is also a macroalgae, but can immediately be distinguished from its invasive lookalike by the smell. Muskgrass, like its name implies, has a musky, stagnant pond-like smell to it. Starry will not contain any such smell. Muskgrass also does not pop when the branches are squeezed and will never have white, star-shaped bulbils. If you are having trouble identifying muskgrass from starry stonewort, send photos or samples to CLMP staff. We love to help you identify plants. 
The final plant to watch for is hydrilla. Hydrilla has been called a super weed due to its aggressive growth habits. It can grow up to 25 feet long, impeding waterways and outcompeting native species. Its reproductive structure, turians, can survive in the sediment for many years before sprouting. Hydrilla is not known to be in Michigan's lakes, but is already impacting lakes in nearby states like Ohio and New York. Hydrilla can be identified by its bright green slender stems with single small leaves whirled around a central stem or axis. The leaves tend to be less than a half inch long with serrated or toothed edges. The central vein or midrib will also have spines or serrations that you can feel with your fingertip. Hydrilla is in the same plant family as our native Elodea, or waterweed, and looks very similar. The primary distinguishing characteristics is the number of leaves on each stem node. Elodea usually has three leaves, while Hydrilla will have five or more. Elodea leaf edges also appear smooth with very finely toothed edges, while the Hydrilla leaf edge is noticeably toothed. Also, Hydrilla usually has spines on the midvein on the underside of the leaf, while Elodea doesn't. Hydrilla is the most threatening species on your invasive plant checklist for the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch program. If you see Hydrilla in your lake and confirm the identity with CLMP staff, you should quickly report it to the DNR Invasive Species Early Detection and Response Team as immediate actions need to be taken against this seriously aggressive weed. Now that you're familiar with the four invasive plants you'll be looking for, let's talk about how to conduct the survey itself. Before heading out onto the lake to begin your survey, you'll need to assemble the necessary equipment. A list of equipment is included in the monitoring information packet you'll receive when joining the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch team. One of the most important tools for surveying is a sampling rake. Instructions for building your own can be found in the monitoring information packet and on the MyCore website. Most lakes are too large to survey in their entirety. Instead, focus your survey efforts on transects, or lines drawn perpendicular to the lakeshore distributed around the lake. You will want to focus your surveying around boat launches, public parks and beaches, inlets, and quiet bays and coves where plant life tends to flourish. The number of transects you should survey depends on the size of your lake. For example, if your lake is less than 100 acres in size, plan to survey 5 to 15 transects. If your lake is more than 100 acres, plan to sample 15 to 20 transects. Look in the CLMP manual for more specific instructions. The best time of year to sample is at the peak of the growing season, from July to early August. If you wait too long into summer, you might miss curly leaf pondweed, but if you wait too long into fall, invasive plants will start to die back and disintegrate. When heading out to sample, it's a good idea to have at least two people in the boat, both for safety and to sample efficiently. You can divide up the tasks of driving the boat, collecting the plants, and recording data. Everyone can help identify the plants. Once you are ready to begin, navigate to your first sampling location. While navigating, have someone fill out the top of the data report cover sheet. Once you arrive, use the sampling rake to collect plants. Record any invasive plants from the project list that you find. Look around the area to see if there are any plants that were missed by your rake. If you find plants not on the invasive species list, you can disregard them. You may wish to photograph a sample of the plants you find for future reference during surveys. If you need help identifying the species of a plant, take a clear, sharp photograph of the plant on a scale sheet or in your hand. Make sure to show the leaves or branching features of the plant close up. There is no limit to the number of electronic images you can send us. You can email these images to the CLMP staff. Alternatively, you can place a sample of the plant you are unsure about in a Ziploc bag. Label the bag with the location where it was found and continue sampling until you have surveyed all locations. If you add any locations while you're surveying, just be sure to give that location a number and record that number on your map or data sheet. If you're working on a large lake or a lake with heavy weed growth, you might not be able to complete the whole survey in a single day. That's okay. Just be sure to record the date of your surveys on each day that you're recording data. When you finish surveying your lake and still cannot identify some of the plants you collected, contact CLMP staff for assistance. They will want to see your photographs or samples of the plants for identification. 
If you are asked to send in samples, keep them fresh by storing them in your refrigerator, wrapped in damp paper towels, tucked inside a Ziploc bag. The completed report is due to the CLMP program by the end of October. If you didn't find any invasive weeds in your lake, the CLMP wants to hear the great news. All you need to do is check the box on the report cover sheet and you are done. If you did find invasive plants, submit your cover sheet, a list of species locations, and any supporting information like maps or photographs to the program contact listed in your monitoring procedures. The effort you spend monitoring your lake for invasive species is an investment in the future of your lake and the health of lakes all across Michigan. From all the staff here at the CLMP, we thank you for your efforts as a valuable citizen lake monitor. To enroll your lake in the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch or to learn more about volunteer monitoring opportunities through the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, visit the Michigan Clean Water Corps website.